All right, welcome back. And we're back on the 3000 wing. Uh, so I just glassed up the bottom side. And yeah, just waiting for this to cure. I'm gonna give it a nice trim, flip it, do the other side. And then I'm going to, again, skin and carbon. I just like to do that at the end. Um, otherwise it gets a little tricky wrapping around the leading edge and the, it, the glass can kind of show through. Now if I want that nice clean carbon look, that's the, uh, that's the best way to do it that I know of so far. But yeah, looking good. I mean, again, this thing is just massive. I, I really can't wait to try it out. So uh, hopefully by the end of this week, it's Wednesday now. I hope to get this glassed up by the end of the day and then be able to use it and try it out this weekend. So we'll find out. So next day here, got the top side and bottom side glassed. Everything's looking great. I'm now just kind of getting started on the mount portion. So I am gonna make this obviously the removable type for the fuselage to come in and out of. Already kind of done the process. Um, there's a video, a few videos back where I've done it, but I'm just gonna go at it again, uh, do it cleaner this time, uh, second time around. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get started and get going on that. So we now have the setup here and the fuselage is now I'm doing that um, two part mold in style. But yeah, I got it set up using my bubble level to make sure this is obviously check in for it being level in this direction. Already got it level in this direction here. Uh, so yeah, just kind of let it set up and cure. This actually takes a little bit longer. Normally if you were to mix epoxy, so it's like thickened epoxy poured in there, it would take a while to cure, but because this aluminum part, it just acts as a heat sink and just sucks all the heat right out of it. So it does take a little bit longer to cure. And then, yep, once that cures, I'm gonna go back and then do my top portion uh, to complete that tube and everything should be good to go. But I'm liking how it's coming out. So coming from up above here, you can see where we got all that epoxy just poured in there, kind of half covering what we got so far. And again, the uh, most important thing here is squareness. So obviously you want to use the bubble to make sure things are level on the fuselage, but you want to make sure that your wing is squared to the fuselage. So I use the line method, um, which I've detailed in some other videos. And you can see I got the back of the fuselage lined up on that line. And that line goes under and is perpendicular to the back edge of this wing. And um, yeah, you can also just use a square and check it physically with the square as well. Being careful not to bump anything out of alignment. So yep, most crucial thing is just making sure everything's squared, lined up, and level. Because there's nothing worse than doing all this work, finishing your wing, putting it on your foil, and then going, you know, it looks like it's a little couple degrees to the left or to the right because at that point there's really not much you can do about it but extra attention and setup at this point will save a lot down the line all right so it's been a couple hours and now hopefully this is nice and cured so we're gonna try to just pop it out Boom, perfect. Love when, uh, love doing that. Pretty satisfactory. So, yep, that's the first half, and I'm gonna drill these holes out now because it's pretty obvious and clear uh, as to where you're gonna drill them. So that's the next step, and then I'm just gonna clean everything up a bit, give this perimeter a sand, and then I'm gonna re-wax, refit in that fuselage, and then do the top, uh, portion to, to make it a tube and then once that's cured I'll really give this a nice sand and then skin it in the uh, in the carbon so I did glass this up to the usual uh, schedule that I recommend for all these wings so the 1500 the 23 and this would be the 3000 and uh, it's definitely 
probably more stiff than you would need. It's even gonna get even stiffer as we put in the uh, cover in here for the fuselage. But just as an example, so I'm just gonna do the carbon skin. And again, that's just for the cosmetic side of things, just to make it look better. Although this white look, I do like it too, if, especially if you're gonna paint the wing and do some designs, that's nice and easy. But just kinda to demonstrate how how damn stiff this thing is, is I put a little bit of uh, wood blocked up here and a little bit there, just to kinda allow me to put some weight in the center to get some flex. And that's not even a fair way to test this because those are two highly concentrated points for the load to be sitting on when in reality, a lot of this center area here is gonna be doing most of the lifting because that's where the wing's the thickest. Down towards the tip, it gets thinner, so there's less lift. So really, this is going to be flexing um, more than it would even if it was just sitting in the water. But I am gonna try to keep it clean. Uh, I don't wanna like, get any oils from my skin onto this wing, but that's, I'm like totally on the wing right now and kind of bouncing up and down on it. And uh, I mean, I would say it's barely flexing. Yeah, really stiff, just as is. And I'm like 180 pounds, just for reference. And that doesn't even, doesn't even budge the thing at all. All right, so take two, just got that. Just cleaned up this fuselage. There's probably still enough residual residual wax on it to do this, but um, I really like to cake it on there because it just makes it easier to pull out in the end. And better safe than sorry, I suppose. I'm not gonna wax anything up in there. I can actually still see wax, a wax film still sitting on that epoxy that's in there. But the wax that we put right here is going to be heavy enough to form a barrier to keep any epoxy from seeping in. And I'm also going to screw in this last hole right here through the wing. And that's just to keep it in place. That way I can kind of, I don't need to have this thing set up perfectly on a jig or anything like that. I can just do this glass up and then just leave it and I can also just move it around if I feel the need but I'm not going to need the need for that but yeah so that's an idea as to what I like to coat that in get these holes kind of caked in just in case and I'm going a bit far back here on the fuselage because I'm going to want to build that tunnel out just a bit not a whole lot but a bit so yeah that's looking good right there so yeah, now I'm gonna just put it in, just being careful not to get any residue or release wax on any of the portions that I just sanded because I want a nice bond to that part of the wing. And that's really the key when working with composites is cleanliness. So yeah, case in point, I had to just go grab this to put a hand here. The key to a good finish and good bonds with composites is cleanliness. You don't want, like even as much, you might think your finger's dry and you might touch a spot on the wing, but turns out there's some oils on your finger and when you go to put a final coat on there, it's going to show up. That epoxy's gonna beat, beat up and roll off of it like, uh, like when you wax your windshield or something like that. So just keep in mind, just never really touch anything um, with bare hands and always use gloves and that even comes more so into play when you're using release wax and stuff like that I mean you won't want that stuff nowhere near your work and you want to be very careful as to where it's going I'm actually gonna throw in a second screw might as well since we're here the lineup of that center screw was okay it's gonna take it actually might might line up great right now but I'm not gonna put in three that would be overkill so yep now the, the beauty is everything's already lined up as opposed to before we had to take out the squares the levels and all that and like quadruple check it 
Everything's perfectly lined up, so just kind of flip it over in glass. Alright guys, so it's quickly turning into a late night here, but definitely well worth the efforts to get this thing done by this weekend, hopefully. So last time I did a little patch over the top portion here, and this time I did it all in one and just cut a seam. So that's a, it's a lot cleaner than before. And given the fact that the fuselage comes right in here, it'll kind of hide the seam a good bit. But really liking how this thing's turned out so far. So this is the top side, I already did the bottom. So I got a nice full double wrap on the front edge, which is fantastic. And that's just with tape, so I'm gonna pull that, zip it with the, uh, with the knife real tight. And then I have my overhang here, not as much as I would like, but I'm going to be pouring my epoxy trailing edge and wing tips. And I got a, a slightly new technique for that, which, is, uh, which works out a lot better. So I'll hopefully get that in here in a few minutes when I go do this side. Okay, so what's this little trick I've been kind of talking about? Well, not really, other people do it too, but basically you just take some carbon and yank out some strands. And then you can lay them down in that gap there. All right, so let's get in and get a little bit of a closer look. I know it kind of just looks like a looks like a cluster because there's just stuff everywhere, but the camera's not picking it up so well. But you can see I got all these strands running down. So I just kind of jam pack it in there, put a lot around the tip here, jam it down in there, make sure everything's nice and soaked out. And that's about it for that. So gave everything a clean up the next morning here and put on that first, or that top uh, gloss coat. So just kind of pounding through it with the 220 grit. Um, if you don't know, I was just wet sanding. I did a whole video previously on the exact steps. It ended up being like a 15 minute long video. It got pretty in detail. I'm not going to go over that now, but if you're interested, check that out. All right, guys, all finished up, and I've just moved out onto the roof to uh, get a more cleaner setting, I suppose. But uh, yeah, wow, it came out fantastic. So I have a little kite wing here, and then the 2300, and then there's the 3000. And the camera angle through this GoPro doesn't really do it, uh, do it justice, but this thing is gigantic. I really can't wait to try it out, because uh, as good as it might look, if it doesn't perform there's really no point point to it but it's just looking looking unbelievable so here's a little kite wing just right on top for scale and uh, it's just uh, it's just funny to see so a couple things that I did better the finish is is much better all around I probably could have done a bit better if I go back and put more time into it but this part came out much better no sand throughs the uh, fuselage fit in is, is much cleaner it's also pretty tight too to pop it off I kind of have to two hand this and then put my feet here and just kind of push it off but it, it pops off pops right in so one last detail is the weight of this thing so that scale is coming out to 1700 grams so give me a second to do the conversions there so obviously uh, for the metric folks, that's 1.7 kilograms. And then for the rest of us, that's 3.7 pounds. So pretty light, when you pick it up for something that size, it, it does feel pretty light. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I appreciate you watching. Hopefully you learned something, a thing or two about doing this type of work. And yeah, I'm gonna get this in the water. We'll see how it does. I'll have some cameras rolling and a report back as to how it performs was it worth was it worth it we'll see is it any better than the 23 we'll find out uh, i have a good i have a good feeling about it so uh, stay tuned for that and i'll hopefully have that up in the next few days